Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Parisa. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining me today. I am going to start with an overview of Linux kernel development and testing philosophy. Understanding the Linux uh, kernel development and testing philosophy will help you get a better understanding of the role case self-test, kernel self-test plays in the development and validation of the Linux kernel. Then we can dive into case self-test itself and how it can be used for kernel validation. I'll also go through a little bit how a brief um, overview of writing a new test and how it can be uh, added to the kernel self-test uh, suite to be run by default. All right, um, so why do we test? Um, uh, testing itself is an integral part of software development. If uh, anybody took the software engineering course, they talk about how design uh, development and testing and integration testing and so on, right? So um, whether we call that unit developer regression or integration testing, uh, it doesn't, name really doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, um, goal is to release um, software without re regressions to the users. Because, why is, that, why is that? Because it makes good money sense. Um, it costs more to debug and fix customer found problems. So uh, with uh, Linux kernel, it's the same thing. So we are looking to, um, looking to release kernels that have no regressions or very few regressions and uh, in good quality code. Linux kernel testing philosophy is same as its development philosophy, which is, um, it is the developer and community driven and Linux kernel community relies on community and users to, to uh, test uh, workloads, configurations, various configurations that kernel supports, and then also supported hardware. Finding and reporting bugs also, community does that, um, does that a lot, right? Developers, uh, other developers find problems in code that they might be using, but not necessarily developing on um, writing that particular subsystem. Testing is more important in this, mo in this model, not just for Linux, it's for all open source projects in general. Um, this, this is because it's not a locked down uh, a software where everything, every parameter is strictly controlled, meaning development uh, phase, integration phase, and testing phase. So Linux kernel development is, uh, um, developers keep adding new features. As they keep adding new features and enhancing existing features uh, and then bug fixes, they all go in. In closed source projects, variables are tightly controlled. Not so in any open source project, especially Linux kernel, um, we, it supports 24 architectures and 300 and plus sub architectures and several configurations. So it, it becomes very important for um, the philosophy matching the developing development philosophy, testing philosophy matching the development philosophy. What that means, developers and community driven testing. So just a little bit on uh, Linux kernel release cycle itself. It's a time-based um, uh, model, not a feature-based. That means if a feature, we don't agree on a set of features that go into a release. We uh, work towards getting the features completed in the time necessary. If a feature is ready, it'll go in. If it's not, it won't. It will wait for the next release to come in. So since the uh, releases come in uh, every two, uh, about eight weeks, eight to 10 weeks, it's if a feature is not ready, might as well wait for the next one. It's right around the corner. And it is a continuous and parallel development model, testing included. So what, how, do, how does Linux kernel overall testing and validation work? Um, for writing tests, um, there are two in kernel frameworks, kernel self-test and KUnit. And if you uh, watched, if you haven't watched um, last couple of weeks ago, Brandon Higgins presented a webinar on KUnit and the role it plays in kernel testing, please check it out. It's on the, it's on the YouTube channel. 
And then developer testing, um, developers use K self test and K unit and others to test. And for regression testing, the same thing. Regression testing also uh, gets done using K self test for sure. And K unit, you can do regression testing um, uh, while you are booting up the kernel and so on. So, um, so that all of these are used. It's a continuous integration testing. I want to touch on what are the other tools that get used. We also have these uh, um, webinars already uh, up on the uh, YouTube channel. Static analysis tools, PARS, SMATCH, KACHICHECK, et cetera. We do uh, use these tools to do static analysis of the code to make sure that we are, um, we are finding problems um, bo bo using various methods, static analysis, as well as dynamic analysis. And you probably heard about SysBot and Fuzzers, um, those, uh, we, that type of testing happens continuously. Let's take a look at where does all of this happen? Um, developers test systems, um, as an example, I'm running um, latest uh, release, well, I'm running uh, 5.12 RC6. I'm going to be switching to RC7 very soon that came out Sunday. So I, uh, that's the system I'm using to do the presentation. So I like to self-host, so I keep going to the latest releases as they come out, um, all of the RCs. So developers do test, uh, use, um, uh, test RCs on their development systems. And then we have several continuous integ integration rings, uh, kernel CI, zero day uh, boot and performance uh, testing ring and zero day build issues uh, um, rings. These are all community driven. I mean, these are, this is not anybody, any one company doing that. This is all community driven. Linaro test farm, um, and there is a build bot um, that da runs build tests on um, think about 53 configurations if I last time I checked and then about 150 different um, uh, combinations of those. Just take a look at the build bot. It's impressive to see how many tests get run and Hulk robot. Uh, in fact, Hulk, Hulk robot found a problem in my patch last week in the Linux kernel, uh, Linux next before it went into the mainland, which is very timely fix. So all of these integration ring, rings play a crucial part in finding problems in Linux next and then other um, developer repositories. And sometimes problems um, also, um, when the reporter uh, uh, reports a problem, they at times also include a patch, which is nice. So where is, what is tested on these rings? Um, you can check out the kernel repositories. The uh, kernel developers request um, uh, to request um, the ring administrators to add, to add their repository, repos repos to their test rings. So they go, they get added that way. And then once repositories get added, um, they get pulled um, uh, for testing each day and to run tests on those. Test rings also test several stable releases candidates each week, and they report results to the stable release mailing list. I included li links to the repos and active releases here. Here You can check those out, uh, which active release, release active, uh, the releases that are actively um, worked on like for example, stable, several stable, stable releases come out every week, um, approximately every week and uh, testing happens. If you were to watch the stable release mailing list, you can see that activity. So what can you do uh, if you would like to participate in the development process? Uh, you can start with being a user. That's one, one of the first things, first steps to get your feet wet. What, what can you do? What you can um, uh, start using Linux on your test, um, on your development or test system, and then uh, uh, run basic uh, boot and user tests and basic sanity tests. tests. You can do that. Um, basic sanity tests, if you are self-hosting like I am, 
um, I'm running, like I mentioned, uh, 5.12 RC6, you will automatically test a various scenarios because you're actually using the system yourself. Um, in your no normal mode, you'll be testing all of the things I identified on this uh, slide. And that does networking work, Wi-Fi work, um, is your, are you able to log into your SSH into remote systems? Are you able to rsync large files from another system or within the same system? If you are um, happen to be doing backup on your system, you'll be very likely using rsync to do so. Um, and if you were to be downloading files, um, your Git cloning, you are using, um, testing all of those aspects. And if you are playing videos or YouTube, uh, listening to a webinar, uh, you're playing both audio, testing audio and video. So it's it's useful to self-host. It helps you be on top of things. And um, it is what is called community called helping yourself um, to help others, right? So when you, what I find is when I am upgrading to a new distribution, if I am on top of uh, the um, running the integration during integration, running all the RCs, I find problems ahead of time. I know that it would, um, I know I can report the problem, I can fix it. I know I'll be able to test it as well. So how do we, another aspect of uh, validating your kernel, if you happen to be running on your uh, development system or test system or your own system is looking for uh, critical error messages. Anything new popped up? Do you have a new, uh, error message that you haven't seen before. New critical message, um, I'm talking about D message. When you look at the D, these are all D message uh, level, warning levels, critical error and warning messages. So you can, and then also you can look for, are there any new panic traces that showed up? Um, and it's possible sometimes that uh, um, a, a new error message gets added um, existing code path. That means that we are reporting a new error. We choose to report a new error, existing error in a new message. So not all error messages that show up new are concerning, but you have to kind of go pay attention to those. All right, so this is a good time for me to take any questions. Do you have any questions at this time? All right, so um, let's uh, start talking about kernel self-test itself. It is a regression test suite for kernel developers and users. It is a mix of user space C programs and shell scripts. Some shell scripts and C programs depend on kernel test modules. Uh, you'll find them under um, lib in the uh, repo you will see most of them are named test something. So you'll find a, a few of those. So what uh, shell scripts do is at times they load the module, uh, run tests, and then unload the module. And same, as, same with case with uh, C programs as well. Some of the C programs, they will depend on a kernel module to exercise um, parts of the kernel um, that you have to load a module to get get into. For example, system calls and such, you can use, um, you can make uh, system calls and write a program to do open, close and so on. And then um, several other system calls, you can test it that way. But in some cases, test modules are necessary for to be able to exercise kernel code. Um, it is a mix of, white and black box tests. Um, it includes some unit tests as well as functional tests. And it also has a hardware dependent tests. Uh, in some cases you will have to, um, some of the shell scripts, driver specific shell scripts, you will have to uh, load the module and have the R hardware as well to test. And a few stress and performance tests. I'll get into that in a little bit. Okay, so we talked about um, how 
cardinal self test is a mix of white box and back black box and functional tests. So the goals for this cardinal self test is it's a developer uh, driven uh, test suite. That means developers, as they add new features, they write tests for those. So feature, functional, and regression tech tests are the focus of this kernel self test, right? So um, when developers find a bug and they add a fix, in they will also add a regression test for it. So it's also bug fix focused. When you fix a bug, um, adding a regression test helps um, test for that fix as well, and then it doesn't show up again. Or uh, if it shows up, we know about it. And then there are these are all subsystem tests. There are several subsystem tests that you'll see in the directory. These tests are organized um, and grouped in directories for each subsystem. Feature API, examples, net networking, um, timers, system control, sync, VM, um, you name it. There are several um, subsystems in that directory. Each subsystem has, um, um, has test subtests underneath. They will have subtests and then also test cases as well. So what it is not is, um, it's not a workload or application testing. The focus is on e increasing uh, both breadth and depth coverage, that means error paths also included. That means if a feature has um, uh, co co covering all the features, for example, of a system calls, system call, all the flags, what kind of flags that could be passed in, IACTLs, what can you, um, if, if the IACTL or system call has uh, flags options or other variables, you test on those. Different arguments can be tested. That's kind of a breadth coverage. And as far as depth goes, you go down into, into various um, code paths that can be covered under a feature as well as across the subsystems. So um, that is the focus here. I'll quickly talk about um, KSL test patch flow works. Tests have all of these subsystem tests. Uh, they have dependencies on subsystem trees because if a, a new feature gets added to a memory management subsystem, for example, or a networking or a system call, that would have dependency on the feature. A test, the test that goes with it has a dependency on the feature. So the tests and features go together. When a new feature is added, since the test depends on it, uh, and developers work on features and tests in parallel, um, it makes perfect sense to have the tests and features go together in a uh, subsystem tree. So you will see a lot of patches going to KSL test. I don't handle all of them. Um, subsystem main, um, maintainers for those subsystems, um, they submit them directly through their trees. Features and tests get reviewed and accepted at the same time into upstream uh, via subsystem trees. This model makes it easier for maintainers and developers because um, if tests have to go separately in a case self test tree and feature goes separately, it becomes difficult to coordinate all of that. So the easier um, thing to do is um, having tests and features go together. The goal really here is make it as easy as possible to add new tests, make it easier for developers um, so that they don't have to worry about uh, breaking their features and tests separately and doing the work separately. So what does case self test contain? It has um, a framework component, the components, let's go through the components a little bit. KSL is fame framework, which is common infrastructure for um, building, running, and installing um, tests themselves, and then individual tests. KSL framework um, includes um, 
includes um, common aspects of it, like building, running, and um, installing tests. Also reporting, reporting um, test, test results, some of the uh, interfaces to report those test results. So the goal is for developers um, that they can focus on writing tests and a common framework can take care of um, building, run and install, which is common across all testing. So this is what a, a, a typical um, view of the uh, test looks like. Main test, which is a target, say it could be a MM test, or a timers test or breakpoints, one of those. That's, it is the directory. This is where the target a directory resides at the under self tools, self tests. I'll, I'll show you the Git where uh, source resides in a little bit. And then usually there are subtests under that. And then each subtest could have a, um, another uh, test underneath. And then there will be several individual test cases. In some cases, some tests could contain up, up to 100, 100 plus individual test cases. Is a good breakpoints test is a good example of that. And Qtex and timers also have a lot of test cases underneath them. And a little bit more on uh, um, K-Self test framework um, itself. See interfaces for reporting test results. You can find that in kselftest.h file under tools, um, testing, self-test. And there will be pass, fail, skip counts um, for uh, a test. For example, how many, if you have 100 plus test cases, individual test cases, how many of them passed, how many of them failed, how many of them skipped because of unmet dependencies. It's a common uh, run framework provides wrappers to do the counts and reporting results because we uh, shell script, there's lots of shell scripts involved as well. So shell scripts uh, cannot use the C interfaces for reporting test results. So we do a wrapper on top that we just count um, the number of tests that get run. As they are getting run, we count the pass and fails and there is hooks from the uh, shell scripts to return error codes to skip codes or uh, pass fail codes so that um, the wrapper catches and then this um, reports the appropriate result. And then individual tests can also use test hardness. Um, this hardness um, helps uh, provide a running runtime environment for multiple test cases. At the same time, compare the results with expected results. For example, if you, you say you make a system call and you say, what are the expected with certain flags? What are the expected uh, result that you're looking for? Say in, in, if you're testing error conditions, for example, you are expecting an error from the, uh, a system call. So you can specify using this hardness, what is expected from when this particular test case is run. So you, uh, and then the result will be compared with a error number, for example, and say, hey, if this, we don't see this particular error number from uh, the system call, that means that the test actually failed because we're looking for, uh, we're looking to test the conditions, different um, behavior of a system call with various inputs, user inputs. For a reporting test, uh, we use test anything protocol. It is a simple text based protocol that um, that our test uh, we use to report so that parsers can go and uh, uh, be able to be able to parse the output and present it in a um, good format. I mean, you know, for human, re I mean, this is human readable, but if you want to see nice graphs and parsing and then see that that is possible using this protocol. Um, so we talked about, it's all make, make file based, um, build, run, install interfaces. They're all make file based. Run script is also make file based and install and packaging tools. All of them are driven through make file. 
And the default run of a, uh, I will show you some examples of a, uh, how to run these tests in just a little bit. Um, case of test default run includes all targets that are uh, slated to run and you add a target make file has all of the, case of test make file has all of the targets listed in there. And there are some uh, stress tests as well. These tr stress tests support default mode meaning some like, for example, hot plug, CPU memory hot plug, and a P-store test support default and stress modes. So default mode um, will be run when the default run um, happens. And if you want to run a stress mode test, you have to do that separately um, at the test level, individual test level. So running as root offers the best coverage because some of these, um, some of the tests uh, require root access to be able to go test um, a particular feature. And running mainline tests on stable, if possible, gives you good coverage for the reason that um, each release, we keep adding new tests um, to um, the test, new tests get, get added, also new test cases get added and new functionality sometimes get added. However, um, running as root um, has its downsides, just like running mainline um, tests on stable. I'll get into that in a little bit. Definitely running as root um, offers best coverage. However, running as root has its downside. So just watch out for that. And then um, in some cases, if you were to use a virtual machine to run, then you can uh, you can run these tests safely. So this is kind of what it would look like. Um, kernel um, self-test on, um, um, you're running on top of the 512 kernel. And then in, in the second picture, I'm showing a kernel mainline coming, latest coming in and running on the stable releases. And so you can also install and run it on a target. You can either run your um, to build self-test and then run it on the same system, which I'll show you in just a bit, um, running it on my system. And then um, uh, in other cases, uh, you can build everything and then uh, take it to another test system. And all of the test, uh, test strings do that. They uh, build um, and cross build and copy it to the uh, test system to test. So when, is this model not case of test running case of test um, from mainline on stable release doesn't work. That will not work on BPF um, because it has a, and other, some other tests, but BPF for sure, uh, it needs, it requires a tight, it has a tight coupling between kernel version and uh, test version. So be watch out for that. So um, stress tests could change the system state, um, like I mentioned with the running as a root in some cases. And so, and then some tests like hot plug and P store support both modes, but some tests could like, if a panic test runs, it could, or reboot tests, some of them, uh, some tests want to put them in suspend mode. If you run the, uh, a test that, if you don't specify root, uh, um, if you don't run them as a root, then you're safe. But if you are planning to run it in safe uh, root, uh, root as root, just make sure that you are, um, you watch out for any side effects. So better thing to do is experiment first in a virtual machine. So the challenges are we are constantly balancing um, developer and user requirements. It is, um, uh, Users want to run all tests uh, and get a feel for uh, release validation. You know, did k self test run cleanly? And developers run tests uh, specific targets to their subsystems. So k self test being a developer test suite favors developer use cases. Uh, so the bias towards um, supporting developers um, more so than users. Um, we we kind of keep balancing. And it has driver coverage, um, error path coverage, as well as um, improving common framework and infrastructure. So increasing the coverage, um, you know, as you add more tests, it takes longer for the, 
the entire test suite to run. Um, so coverage is a priority. Uh, when we started out, we were kind of looking at how long does it take, but we decided that coverage is priority. And then we don't worry about timing as much because you can select a subset of tests and I'll show you how you can do that in just a little bit. Um, and then error path coverage is good. Um, I encourage test writers to think about increasing error path coverage. And this is also an opportunity area for new developers to look at coverage and add tests to increase error path coverage. So driver coverage is challenging, especially with um, you know, hardware specific testing. It is difficult to have access to all the hardware for everybody. So default run generally um, focuses more on areas of, even if there is a driver test, it tends to focus more on um, IACTLs, verifying uh, error paths on IACTLs and so on. So you can find, um, I won't go through this slide um, in detail, but you can find all of the uh, uh, branches, next and fixes and so on. Next contains um, upcoming merge window uh, content and fixes contain current RC work. And then you can find these sources on tools, testing and self-tests and there is documentation, dev, dev tools, case self-test, um, RSD. That's where you'll find the documentation. So you can, how does building tests work? You, there are several options. You can um, build tests directly from the main make file, which is the kernel root source root directory. And then if you were to run case self test dash all, um, it will run. The silent option suppresses the make file build uh, uh, messages. So it's a good one to use. And then you can, using this targets vari make file variable, you can select um, tests. You can uh, give, a, you can just build one test or more than one test like I'm showing here, timers, this particular command, um, the command here uh, will build timers and size test. And then it, when a case of test build runs, it will install headers. This is uh, because you want to run kernel self-test on a uh, kernel release with the tests, with the headers from that release, um, latest release. So you want to do that. Um, that's why it'll install the test first, install headers first, and then it'll build um, the tests themselves. And it supports cross-compile and relocatable builds. Um, and if a test fails to build, we have lots of tests right, to build, right? So if a test fails to build, it'll continue. It'll keep going so that it can um, build the test so that you can run it. And there is a case of test depends, dependency uh, check tool that you can check. Uh, it, th what that this, this does is it'll uh, run on your test system or a development system, wherever you are planning to build your case self test. Uh, it'll check and say, hey, do we have all the libraries? For example, some tests require additional li libraries to be installed, like a K LCAP, uh, capabilities library, uh, fuse library, fuse test will uh, require that. So this will look for the libraries um, if all of the dependencies are met on your um, test system or a system, system you are building KSL fund. So it's a good one to run. And it can also um, check just, pop. it can, you can also run on one single test if you want and say, hey, um, does my um, uh, VM test can, or a fuse test, can it build on this? So you can check that. Um, I'm, I am, uh, I'm not going to go through too much of this, but yeah, so that's, that's how that works. So running tests, you can run tests using from the main make file at the kernel uh, so, uh, root source directory. You can just say a make k, k self test. So that will build the tests if they aren't already built and then it will run them. And you can also select a few tests to run, um, select a subset of them to run as well, just like the way the build works run works the same way. And um, you, I, we talked a little bit about stress testing. 
uh, stress testing isn't part of um, the kernel self-test main um, run, default run. So you can, if you want to run it from the main make file, you can do so by um, running run hot plug, will run the hot plug tests and run pstore crash, will run them. So timers have a some destructive trust. We split them out. Timers, when you run spire, timer tests that could change the timing on the system uh, and such, they have been split out into a destructive test and though it could be run on a system, you have to choose to run them and be aware of the side effects or how it, it will affect your system state. Reporting, it does in two different modes. Reporting is detailed versus summary. Uh, detailed more, mode will um, give you reporting on the individual test runs themselves. So developers favor detailed mode as it helps them debug problems, of course, and they want to know how individual tests um, are doing or a particular test case is behaving. Whereas users want to know the summary of test cases, just the summary of the entire test run um, at, a, at a higher level. So K self test supports both of those with the summary option. So if you were to say summary equals to one, it'll just display that. I'm going to run, I'm going to do a demo of this in just a little bit. So you'll know, you, you see the difference. So installing, uh, you can do that from the main make file. All of these K self test dash commands, they all work from the main make file. And then that's the only place they can be run from. They, they funnel from the main uh, kernel make file into the self-test make file. And then you can clean uh, after building if you don't no longer want them. And then make uh, gen tar, this um, installs and generates a nice uh, tar file for um, packaging. This needs to be done in, this needs to be run though in the self-test directory. So, I guess we can do a quick demo. I'm going to stop sharing and then share my um, terminal. Do you do you have any questions at this time? Any questions? Shua, there is one question that came in through the Q and A chat. Okay, okay. Let me do that. Let me check that. Yes, you do have to have a full kernel source tree on a system to run run K self test. In fact, you should have a kernel built as well um, for that. Okay, so I will actually so show a case where I am, I have a kernel built in my um, repo right now. So I will share my uh, window here. Um, so everybody can see my terminal. Okay, yes. let's see. Okay, so I do have a kernel built here. Um, and uh, let's look at a couple of, I want to run a test. Um, I am actually building, trying to build a test here. I picked a, a test, a simpler test to do demo here. And then this will build just that one test. So I happened to, in an earlier case, when I was playing with this, I ended up, when I ran case self test uh, build, I ended up installing headers. So that's why you're not seeing header installed. Otherwise, when you run case self test, any of the build, the first time you will see kernels um, headers being installed. Okay, so we have that. And um, how does clean work? So I'm going just going to do uh, a clean. So it just you can see that it just removed right here um, the one that it just built. Um, and then I'm going to show you run now run and build. Since 
no, you know, we, we cleaned this up, right? So it should actually build size and then run it. So you will see that it built the size and then it ran it and you'll see these totals. So it's, uh, this is the ta test anything protocol version I'm talking about. Every single report me message in here is um, um, uh, this pound so that it's easier to parse. And you can say, um, so it, it will sh say, okay, if everything worked. Um, okay is a keyword. Uh, for parsers in test anything pro um, protocol. So it ran it and it's saying that I ran this test and it gave the uh, total of runtime memory report um, and then in use and then it, it uh, says that with the tap header too, it says. Um, and then you will also see that the test name. So this is all wrapper picks this up and then reports all of this. And this test does, has only one test case. So that's why you are saying one dot, just one here, uh, main test and then one test case. So let's see if we run this in a summary mode, what do you see? So um, don't know why it's doing all this, but okay, so summary mode. So you can see the difference between the summary mode, you will see that it hasn't displayed, it hasn't reported, it suppressed all of this stuff, like um, okay, um, get size, runtime, all of these totals and uses. The goal for this is, well, did size test pass? And if somebody, a user is uh, a test string or a user that wants to know if a size test pass this time around, um, then summary mode is very useful to do to, for that. So now I'm going to clear my screen um, just so that we can run another uh, test here. I want to show you um, breakpoints. This is, uh, this will run, um, this is going to, to display. So this is an example of a test where you have several test cases. Um, it is, it ran about 110 uh, test cases and it, it'll give a breakdown on what it's doing and test description. And like, for example, writing, writing watch point and it shows you what it's writing and it'll run these 110 tests and then tell you how many passed and how many failed, uh, the totals for that. And it is, it also has a suspend test, if I remember correctly, that would be not, okay, okay, so yeah, right here. So this one requires root access. So it's just saying, I'm going to skip this test because you are running as a, a normal user and I'm going to run the tests I can run. So that's, um, any questions on this reporting or at this point. So I will, um, while you think about questions, I'll also run this in summary mode to show you the difference because this does have a lot of um, sub test cases. You will see the difference very clearly on how it'll just show you. It's saying at a higher level, it's saying I couldn't run stop after suspend test because you're not running as root. I'm skipping that and it'll say skip here. And then um, it'll also say, I have run um, breakpoint test. It won't tell you how many test cases there are, but it'll run those. All right, um, so I want to quickly show you how you can also run um, this tool that I talked about, dependency tool. Um, this is this is uh, the tool that will uh, that you can run to see which tests will build on your system. For example, if you it'll tell you uh, the libraries, it'll parse, it'll look at all the libraries you have installed, the dependencies are met or not, and then do that for you. So I haven't run this in a while, um, so. Um, 
bear with me if I if this fails to run, but this is what it'll show you. For a VM test, I want to know, hey, do I have everything? So it'll tell you, um, it, this VM test depends on um, all of these libraries, um, and then it will tell you what will be, it, it'll check and see dependencies are met or not. So let me see timers while we are at it. So it'll tell you which, um, so it, it, you can see how many, it, it figured out um, what timers test needs for that. And then it'll tell you those dependencies are, uh, do exist or not. I think I might not have fused test. Let me see. I don't know if this is a test, let's see, no. I'm going to pick one test. I think I do know, these are all different tests right here. Uh, each directory will have, we, we ran this test right now, uh, breakpoints. This breakpoints test has um, two different tests. Breakpoint test is the one that you got all of those 100 tests from. And then it also has a variation for ARM64 because of architecture variation. And then you will see the stop after suspend that didn't run. Okay, let's see if I can find one test quickly to show you if it has dependencies, if you can find the dependencies here. Maybe that one, maybe that one for dependencies. Missing libraries, yes. Um, so yeah, the, I couldn't remember which test uh, uses um, fuse library. So I don't have that on the system. So it'll tell you, hey, you need to install that before. All right, so I think my demo part is done um, at this point. So I can, I mean, you can see the number of tests we have here um, and each area uh, keeps expanding. We tend to have multiple, um, uh, every release, we each area gets more tests added. Sometimes we have new tests coming in and rest control, um, there is a test coming in um, that I'm, I have in the next that's going in, um, changes to that going in this time around. So, um, and so I will stop sharing now. Let's switch back to uh, the presentation. Okay. So any questions so far? Okay, I see a question. Um, do case of tests run from user space via system calls or tests can be written in kernel space? So uh, twofold, the answer is twofold. For system calls, definitely it's a user space because all of the users, uh, syscalls um, and then IOCTLs, when um, uh, they are run from uh, the user space. So when a test requires a kernel assistance, kernel mode, to be run in kernel mode, that's when we use that model where we have um, a test case that will have use a kernel module. Let me show you, actually, that's a very good question. I'm going to go um, to my, um, my window again to show you um, a test that fits that. Like for example, this, um, So I do know 
live tests do have load modules. Like for example, this one will um, load a module. It depends on um, kernel test printf module. So that's how some tests exercise kernel code in there. So you will see if you go into lib, you will see a test module for it. So there are lots of test modules, but you'll see print key, that one right there. That is the one that's getting triggered do using that shell script. So that's how that works in some cases. If a developer chooses to do that, saying that I need a that they need they think that they can run a test better with a test module having a kernel test module, they will write a test module. So you will see it is a kernel module. So it'll have it's a uh, lightweight kernel modules. It's going to do test number, test string, right? Test pointer. So it'll do all of those. It, when you load it, it'll run all of those tests. So te these are all the tests that it'll run when you load the test, when that shell script runs. So that's, is there a way to test hardware configuration using this? Um, it's, yes, that would be one use for that. Um, let, let me see if there are any uh, examples that come to mind. You could exercise, but, but you do need hardware also, right? Unless you can um, somehow mock it in your, um, in your uh, module, test module, mock the hardware in your test module. So yes, this is one way you could do it if you were to mock it. So I'm going to be switching back to my presentation. Um, okay, so are you seeing my slides back again? Just give me a... Yes. Yes, great. So um, contributing uh, new tests. So I'll talk quickly about contributing new tests. And now that you have seen how it works and you have seen a, a few tests here, um, report um, contributing new, new tests, pay attention to reporting uh, pass fail skip conditions. You have seen how the skips and passes and fails are reported um, it, in wrappers as well as individual tests. So it, it would be clearly do, identifying the pass fail skip conditions with clear messages will be very useful for users. So message should say why it failed of course and why the test is skipped. If, if a test is skipped very clearly. If it is skipped because a feature cannot be tested, um, maybe the kernel does not support that feature or uh, you, you might run into this case. The reason for that is we do want to run mainline tests on stables, right? So the stable releases might not have a kernel feature. We wanna make sure that we can run all the tests we can possibly run on that kernel version without um, and skipping gracefully as needed if a kernel does not support that particular feature. And in some cases, it is root versus non-root. You have seen that. Um, breakpoints tests, one, one of the test cases needed to be run as root. Since I was running as a normal user, it just said, hey, I can't run this test. And the goal is really run as many tests as possible with given the configuration and features the kernel supports. Um, and skip the others gracefully. Um, okay, um, let's see. How do you hook into the um, framework? Uh, adding a new test to the kernel uh, self-test make file um, will. It's a, it has a tar list of targets, top to bottom. We organize them in alphabetical order so that we it makes it easier and we don't run into merge conflicts because we the tests go into various subsystems. And if a new test get, get MM test get added or a new um, another test get added coming through a different subsystem, we don't, the make file doesn't become a merge conflict. So we are organize them. If you look at the make file, if I have time, I'll show you what the targets look like in the make file. Um, and then um, once you add that, you are set, but you'll also need a test make file. 
the text test test make file under it what it does is it um provides enough information for the common layer to know which programs to be run um, and which programs need to be copied if or uh, installed, which, which ones you do need to install. And then as the test is running, it will also create a overall test script to run. Uh, when you uh, run KSELF test, uh, you, it will generate, if you're running it on your test system, not a problem, it'll just run it. But if you are planning to install it and run it in a different, uh, on a different system, you need a overall run script. So it will create that run script for you. So the individual tests need to tell the common layer, which tests, which test scripts need to be copied and what kind of tests to be emitted. Like for example, if you are, loading a test module, your test says load this module. Um, loading this module, some of it is common layer, but some of it is um, you have to tell it uh, which test, how to run the test. So, um, all right. So, um, and then there is a configuration file, which the config file here will specify the configurations that it uh, the test depends on. So you can have configurations, spec specify configurations for individual tests there. And then leverage the framework. My recommendation is just leveraging the framework as much as possible, making it easy for yourself to run tests. But if for some reason there is a custom build necessary for, for a test and override overriding any of these um, run and M run, there are several uh, make file uh, uh, targets. Those can be overridden and overwrite them only if it's absolutely necessary. I have a question I'll take now. Um, is there a web link describing process on how to become a tester for LF? No, um, so I, I, I'm thinking that the question is about Linux kernel itself, not Linux foundation. Um, the community, there is no, you can look into the kernel uh, repository for a documentation on how KSL test documentation, for example, KUnit documentation, they both tell you how to run those tests. The best thing would be to um, play with them, both of those tools on your uh, system and start playing with the tool on your system. So that's, that's how you can get involved and um, as far as what can you do to help, right? Um, run, obviously run case of test on your test systems, development systems, or your you know, systems to whichever systems that you want to run it on and to validate the kernels. We have latest kernels coming in, Re release candidates keep coming in. And write new tests because sometimes um, not all, the tests can always use enhancement. We can enhance existing tests. We can enhance um, the writing new tests and the driver area definitely needs some help uh, in terms of um, being able to mark if there is a model of marking and then um, in the kernel space and exercising, that would be helpful. And then also reviewing tests, reviewing tests and testing the tests of course um, is also very helpful to to any other questions at this point? If we have a bit of time, I can show you the make file, how that looks. Um, let me switch back again. All right, so I am um, I'm going to go to self test make file has all of these targets. So you will see um, targets. The, the reason I explained the reason why we keep them in this order 
is to avoid conflicts on this file, merge conflicts on this file. So um, let me go. So we do have, that's the last test. So you can say we have A through Z, maybe we are missing some alphabets here, but we have um, 74 tests uh, right now. Well, roughly 70 plus because I have some if, defs, if steps here. But um, uh, with about roughly 70 plus tests and each test could have several test cases and subtests underneath. So you are looking at a large number of tests. Good question. Um, when to pick a K unit versus K self test? Um, so the uh, answer to your question, K unit is when you have um, when you have a large chunks of the kernel that you want to test without and parts of the kernel that might not have any user uh, triggerable user interface API to it, K unit works very well. K self test works very well when you have system all the system calls, for example, are um, like sec, sec comp right here, right? So um, any system calls, any API that you want to make sure to test that we are not breaking kernel API and API. And one example I will say K unit would work well is um, actually, the library module I was showing you, the test print uh, print K or print printf, I think. So if you have a kernel, if you have to write a kernel module to be able to run a test, K unit becomes a good option because you don't have to write a kernel module. You can just K unit, uh, K unit being run at the boot time, or K unit can run on um, K unit script can go go trigger the kernel um, test directly, that would be useful. And the second part of the question you asked is, which is for the common, ex which is a common example of a driver test. So there are a couple here. Um, the, under driver's directory, um, you will see, mm, okay, sorry. All right, under driver's directory, you will see, I think GPU test probably is a good example here. Um, there is a I915 um, test. It might have come, uh, come about as a uh, bug um, fix. And I can show you the one that I wrote because I was dealing with kernel bugs. So I wrote a shell script to um, exercise a uh, paths of the kernel parts of this driver that run into uh, problems. But I have been running into um, test problems. I mean, the bugs, recurring bugs. So I use this actually, this test, whenever I have a patch that um, comes in for me, I maintain the USB IP router. So I use this test um, to make sure that um, nothing, it tests various combinations. It'll run, it has a, this driver has a user um, part user tool within the kernel, also the kernel driver itself. So what happens often with this driver is you will have uh, situations where um, uh, race conditions, the paths, if, if you were to run the user space tool uh, to do something after unloading the driver and so on. So I look, I have a sequence of commands I run from the user space into the, to exercise the driver to make sure that all of those um, that we don't panic um, if a user space command comes in to do something uh, after the driver is removed, remove modded. So, um, and so gracefully exit. So that's one example of the script that I wrote, the test I wrote that exercises the bug fixes. And then I still use it as a regression test mechanism. Any other questions? Let's see if you have any questions that I need to be on the uh, have the terminal shared. So while we, um, 
don't have any questions, let I can show you a few more things. I want to show you how uh, So uh, yes, I can I can show you, show you um, the stress test modes that I was talking about. CPU hot blood test. Oh, so yeah, we can also see the config file at the same time. So this con um, this config file tells you. Um, what this particular test, CPU hot plug test, depends on. If you have, you have to build the kernel with a config uh, notifier error injection uh, for this to work. And if you look at the make file itself, this is the uh, one I was talking about. Why it's important? It's a shell script. Why do I care uh, to have a make file? Make does nothing. Um, this is the reason why. So this tells the KSL test uh, common layer, install layer to say, hey, I need this program to be copied if, you, if user is installing this test. So, and then this uh, file right here, live.make, it's right under the self test directory, self test directory. This is where a lot of the common um, uh, framework is like build, running, emitting tests. So this is a, so when you are running, this is one example where um, of the test that emit tests come into play. So this particular test has two modes to run. So it will, it will, this is the full test. When it full test runs, it will run the full test, meaning you're yanking CPUs out, right? With the CPU hot plug, you don't want to do the full test. If you were to run this full mode, stress test mode, um, it, uh, your uh, case of test will hang. So that's why this is excluded from the default run and kept as a separate one. So that's a good example of a stress test. So there is another stress test similarly, um, which is memory hot plug. Okay, let's see if I remember. Okay, yes. So this is another one. You will see similar um, characteristics for this test as well, because both are hot, hot plug tests. So this hot plug test requires memory hot plug and all of these kernel op, um, options to be built into the kernel. So if you look at this test make file, you'll, you will see that it also supports a full test mode and a mode where it will only do um, a few, um, uh, it'll just um, uh, remove a couple of memory modules. Um, where is the shell script for this? So you will see that it's a dash R option. It'll show you that it, it says how many to take offline. So you can, the default mode just runs with uh, like one or default mode ratio is like, um, ratio is two. So it'll take, uh, take a ratio of it'll look at the number of memory modules and just take the two of percent out of that so that this running this test doesn't uh, impede the K self test run itself. So, and then, okay, architectural specific tests. PowerPC test, uh, PowerPC area has lots of tests um, and it's, uh, they are PowerPC uh, specific tests. You can see several tests underneath. And similarly, ARM64 has a bunch of tests underneath. Another area, architectural area you will see is Spark. Um, Spark test, it, they, they have tests for their feature, which is a ADI test, one of their uh, features, um, that ADI driver. So it's a driver test. So you have a combination of various tests. A good example of a features test will be, um, sys control. 
and it has um, it also has a config. Okay, let's see what all it's testing. Test this control. So uh, it has it is a shell script. It will um, invoke um, calls to exercise. What is it doing? It's doing some. Yes, it'll invoke. Um, it's checking various conditions. Check production sys control write strict, and then take a look at all these tests. It, it's it's very another great way of learning what kernel does actually. Because starting with seccomp is a good example. It has um, it's a it has a benchmark test. Uh, like I mentioned, like we have some benchmarks. So this is one example of some benchmark hiding here. And watchdog test is a driver test, actually. This, um, this will invoke, this is one test that uh, I was referring to that it makes a lot of IOCTLs calls. Oh, okay. So you will see a bunch of IOCTLs. So we have a mix of those tests. Any other questions? If not, I will switch back to the presentation. All right, so that's where you can help. There is uh, there is more work to be done. Uh, we have constantly new things coming up. Um, at times, um, because of the way the uh, test kernels, uh, new patches go into the kernel, um, at times, uh, tests don't, uh, we have situations where tests don't build correctly, or they are not skipping um, the cases they should skip, or their error messages could go use improvement when they fail or skip especially. And then some tests, we do a good job of finding all these things, but in some tests, um, they don't uh, fail gracefully if you don't run them. In uh, uh, if, if it re needs root access, it won't clearly tell you that, hey, why am I not running this test? So we there is a constant um, improvements that we can keep making. Any other questions, anything, um, any other demo I can do? With the time we have. Thank you for joining us um, today. We hope it will be helpful in your journey to learning more about effective and productive participation in open source projects. We'll leave you with a few additional resources for your continued learning. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Shua, for your presentation and your time today. And thank you everyone for joining us. As a quick reminder, this recording will be posted to the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. Thank you so much again. We hope that you will join us for future mentorship sessions. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.